Hey guys. Okay, so we're going to start off with our vocab words for today. Again, unit one, week two in your notebook. Um, should have started with expensive, barter, peddler, and worthless from yesterday. Uh, expensive means cost a lot of money. Barter means to trade. Peddler means someone who sells something. And worthless means something that doesn't have any cost or has no value to it. We're going to add the words permanent. Permanent means to last for a very long time. Also includes forever. And our second word is obvious, something that's easily seen or figured out. Oh, should be or here. Should be easily seen or figured out. Excellent. All right, so those are our vocab words for today. We're also going to go ahead and go through our main selection story. This week we are talking about uh, fables. And fables are stories that teach a lesson of some kind. The most famous is usually the tortoise and the hare. So the tortoise goes slowly and steadily through the race in order to win, versus the hare who tries to race, 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 and then, oh, ha, 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 I'm going to win anyway. I might as well take a nap. And he ends up losing the race because of his uh, boasting, because he thought, oh, I don't need to worry about it. I'll just get there and I'll get there first anyway. So the lesson it gave us was don't be boastful and slow and steady. Working, even though it's slow, working on something for a long period of time, you'll still get better results, okay? Today's story is called What About Me? And we're gonna be looking for several different things here in the story. Um, first of which is going to be our characters. So without further ado, Let's get started. So it says, what about me? Uh, the main question this week is, what can we learn by trading with one another? Okay. Again, this story is considered a fable. It's a very short story and often a very old story that teaches a moral or a lesson at the end of it. Characters here are very simple in a fable, each possessing a single trait or one single thing that they do. For example, in What About Me, the characters are named for roles that they play in the story. Instead of real names, they have names like the boy, the carpenter, the goat keeper, and the merchant. We'll have to predict and check our predictions later, thinking about what it is that we're trying to learn about in this story. Okay? By the end of the reading, we should be able to know a little bit more about what we can learn about trading with one another. Let's go ahead and go on. So on page 66, here are our first page. It says, once there was a boy who wanted knowledge, but he did not know how to gain it. I shall see a grand master, he said. He has plenty. Perhaps he will give me some. When he arrived, he bowed his head and said, Grandmaster, you are wise. How may I gain a little bit of your knowledge? Okay, so. In and in this first page, I see this first sentence. It says, once there was a boy who wanted knowledge, but he did not know how to gain it. We can make a mental note about this and read on and see what the boy asked the grandmaster for. So in the second part of this, the second paragraph, it says, when he arrived, he bowed and said, grandmaster, you're wise. How may I gain a little bit of your knowledge? Okay, so he's asking, how can I gain knowledge from you? From these sentences, I can summarize in this whole story that the boy's goal is to gain some sort of knowledge. We can predict that he is going to try and gain knowledge throughout the story, We'll have to see if we can confirm that prediction later on. On page 67, on the right, it says, the grandmaster said, you need to bring me a small carpet for my work. The boy hurried off to find a carpet maker. A carpet, carpet maker, he said, I need a small carpet to give the grandmaster for his work. The carpet maker barked. He has needs, what about me? I need thread for weaving my carpets. Bring some thread and I will make you a carpet. Hmm. 
Seems like there's already a pattern forming. We'll have to see if that continues. So the boy went off to find a spinner woman. He found her at last. Spinner woman, spinner woman, he said. I need some thread for the carpenter who will make me a carpet to give to the grandmaster for his work. You need thread? She wheezed. What about me? I need goat hair to make the thread. Give me some and you can have your thread. So the boy went off looking for someone who kept goats. Ooh, yeah. Our pattern of going from, okay, first we talk to this person and then they need something. So we go to another person to get that thing and then they need something else. And then going to a third person, it seems like that's exactly what's going to happen in this story. If we look at this last paragraph on page 68, right here, so the boy went off looking for someone who kept goats. I know that the author can use clue words to help his readers figure out the sequence of events in this story. In this case, the word so is telling us that is the next thing he did. See how it's repeated at the beginning here? And then so for the next thing? That's helping us tell, uh, that's helping us know that the word tells us the next thing or next event is about to happen. Okay? So let's go ahead and read on to page 69 over here. It says, when he came to the goat keeper, the boy told him his needs. Your needs? The other's needs? What about me? You need goat hair to buy knowledge. I need goats to provide the hair. Give me some goats and I will help you. Hmm. Let's see what he does with that. So on page 70 here on the left, it says, The boy ran off again to find someone who sold goats. When he found such a man, the boy told him of his problems, and the goat master said, What do I know about thread or carpets or grand masters? I need a pen to keep my goats in. They are straying all over the place. Get me a pen and you can have a goat or two. Okay, so if we look at the word here of goat seller, talking about our compound words again this week, compound words are two words that get stuck together. So in the word goat seller, right, or grand master or those kinds of words. We have the word goat, seller, and we can stick them together. If we break them apart, we know, okay, a goat is a small animal and a seller is someone who sells objects. So if it's a goat seller, it's probably a person that's gonna sell goats. Knowing the bits and pieces of a word can really help us understand the definition. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep reading. So the boy's head buzzed. Everyone has a need, he mumbled to himself as he hurried off. And what of my need for knowledge? But he went to find a carpenter who made pens, and he gave the carpenter his long story. Say no more, the carpenter said. Yes, I make pens, but I need a wife, and no one will have me. Find me a wife, and we can talk about your problems. So the boy went off, going from house to house. All right, so we can check our predictions here. We thought that the student, the child here, the boy, would be looking for knowledge throughout the entire story. Is he still looking for knowledge? Well, yes. If he's still trying to figure out how to get all of this stuff in order to give it the Grand Master a carpet to gain that knowledge, he is still looking for that knowledge. Okay? So we're actually going to stop here on our story today uh, and switch over to our Reader's Writer's Notebook. Please take out Reader's Writer's Notebook page 58. It should say vocabulary on top of it. Okay, so here is your page. 
So it's vocabulary compound words. That's what I was talking about a minute ago. Again, it's page 58 in your Reader's Writer's Notebook pages. If you're ever confused about which pages go to what lesson, the What About Me is our story this week. So all of our pages this week will match to that story up here in the right-hand corner of every single page, okay? So it says vocabulary, compound words. Sometimes you may come across words you don't know. The word may be long or a compound word made of two smaller words. Again, talking about that compound word being compound word, compound word, having two smaller pieces, sticking them together becomes a compound word. If you know the meaning of the small words, it'll help us figure out the meaning of the long words. So let's read this riddle. Then we're going to circle the compound word that solves the riddle. It says, I take care of goats. I watch them during the day. I watch them at night. Who am I? Well, the most important part here is we have to look for the description of, well, who they might be. So if they take care of goats, right, we can look at the two options of a goat keeper or a goaltender. Goat keeper has two pieces, right? We have goat on one side and we have keeper on the other. So if we stick those together, goat keeper, stick them together, we get goat keeper. Goat is actually part of that name. So if he takes care of goats, right, and it has the word goat in it, keeper must be take care of. So goat keeper would be our right answer, okay? I'll do one more with you. It says, I sit and weave all day. I make wonderful patterns of many colors. I make things you put on your floor and walk on. Who am I? Well, our options are cover up or carpet maker. Well, a cover up, right, is something that you use to cover up yourself. Usually here in Phoenix, that means to cover up with a swimsuit cover. So a jacket or like a robe kind of thing that you wear over your swimsuit. Carpet maker is two parts. Carpet is one. And then we have the maker of said carpet being the second half. So if it says, I sit and weave all day, okay, we haven't really heard much of anything with that yet, but I don't think you'd necessarily weave a cover-up. I make wonderful patterns of many colors. Okay, you could still maybe use a cover-up with that, lots of different colors. I make things you put on your floor and walk on. Ah, we don't walk on a cover-up because that's something we just put on us before or after we go swimming. A carpet, though, is put on the floor. So if they make the carpet, they are a carpet maker. Very good. All right, guys, I want you to go ahead and finish numbers three through eight for me, okay? This is just good practice of being able to break down those compound words in order to understand, okay, if I know that it's fire fighter, well, th there is fire and they fight that fire, right? Breaking into the two pieces can really help us understand the meaning of that larger word, okay? So go ahead and, and work through numbers three through eight on that one. And then we'll go ahead and move on with the rest of our lesson. So go ahead and pause my video here until you get that finished, and then you can go ahead and play it from now. All right, guys, now that you're done with that page, go ahead and turn back to page 55 and 56 um, on our Reader's Writer's Notebook pages as well. This is page 55, Subjects and Predicates. Okay, yesterday we talked about this a little bit, but today we're going to talk a little bit more. So a subject is the person, place, or thing that the whole entire sentence is about. The predicate is what it is that is happening. Okay, so tell the action. A sentence has a subject and a predicate. The subject of the sentence part is the part that tells whom or what the sentence is about. All the words in the subject are called the complete subject. The predicate is the sentence part that tells the subject does or is. It includes a verb. All the words in the predicate are called the complete predicate. In the following sentences, the complete subject is underlined once, the complete predicate is underlined twice. The verb is circled. 
so the market would be our topic, right? Talking about who or what this is about. Has many interesting things. Has many interesting things is telling us, okay, this is the action that is happening. But the verb, the actual physical action, is the word has because they it has many interesting things, okay? So in the bottom selections here, one through five, it's telling us to underline the complete subject of each sentence. So on number one, it says many people buy beautiful carpets at the market. Well, in this case, we're looking for the subject here, right? Who or what the sentence is about. And in this case, it's talking about people. We can tag on many here because we're looking for the complete subject. If we were looking just for the subject by itself, so if it just said subject and didn't have the word complete, we would just put people. But because it says complete subject, that means that all words before it or that are tagged to that subject will have to be underlined. Okay, so many people buy beautiful carpets to the market. Okay, let's do another one. Number two says farmers bring goats to the market too. Well, who or what is it about? Well, technically, it's just about farmers. Yes, we're talking about goats, but that's a secondary subject. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But farmers are who or what is actually doing the action in this sentence. So that would be our subject. I'm gonna let you complete three through five on your own here in a minute, but let's go ahead and jump down to section six through 10. Okay, it says underline the complete predicate for each sentence, circle the verb. So it says a young boy asks for help. So we're asking what is the action here, the predicate of the sentence, the complete predicate. So what is it that is happening? Well, the boy asks for help. He is asking for help. That is what he is doing. The verb, the actual physical response that he is giving, is asking or asks for help. Okay, so that is our verb. If it helps remind you, you can put a little V here. So you remember that, oh yeah, that's the verb. Okay, so number seven says so the old man is wiser than the boy. Well, the action is, is, right, is our verb. Is is an action. Is what, though? Is wiser than the boy. Typically, your verb will actually kind of tip off where that predicate or the continued predicate is going to be because without this action word at the beginning, you wouldn't know that it's the predicate at all because the action hasn't happened yet. So remember, your verb will almost always start your predicate. Go ahead and complete numbers three through five and eight through 10 on this page. Pause my video and we'll come back here in just a second. All right guys, so now we're on page 56, just turn the page, right? We're talking about our spelling words for this week and plurals. So remember plurals are words that are created by adding S, E, S, or I, E, S. Okay, so penny becomes pennies, inch becomes inches, plant becomes plants, right? It changes for whichever one you have to add, either S, E, S, or I, E, S, depending on the ending of each word, all right? So number one, the section says, write the word that names each category. So our first one, again, matching on number one line to number one question, says colored and sharpened are types of blank. Well, if something is sharpened, right, something we use at school is normally sharpened, is usually a, you're right, it's a pencil, right? Can we have colored pencil as well? Yes, we can. 
So although my pencil doesn't need to be sharpened, right? Some pencils do. So if we have more than one colored and sharpened type, that means that we have to put an S at the end of pencil to make it into pencils. So we're going to write that answer on line number one to match up with question number one. And then we'd go to number two. It says paper and pens are types of school. Hmm. Well, if a supply is one, how would we write more than one supply? Very good. It would be supplies, right? Right next to pencils. So on line number two, we would write supplies, right? And you continue with numbers three, four, five, and six on here as well. Now I'm gonna jump down to the bottom to just read the directions for you. It says write the plural of the underlined word in each sentence. All right, some of these, I'm pretty sure you'll have a uh, copy from before, but if you don't, that's okay too, all right? Make sure that you start with your singular version. So three family went on to the campy trip. We have to change the underlined word family to the plural form. So instead of family, we have families, right? Family to families. That means we're going to write it here on number seven. Dropping the Y and adding an IES to create that plural version. You're going to continue to do that for numbers 8 through 15 as well, okay? Now go ahead and go work on that to practice your plurals as well as your spelling words. Happen to be the same thing this week. And then you can go ahead and replay my video so that way we can go on to our writing, all right? So pause my video and I'll see you in just a bit. Okay guys, so I took out my notebook again and went back to my table of contents page. In my case, it's still on page four, okay? Remember that we're numbering our pages as we go. If you haven't done that already, make sure you get them numbered out so we know what pages we're gonna be on. But we're gonna add our second page on here, okay? If you still have extra pages that were like before this, go ahead and take them out. You can get rid of them, we don't need them. We're gonna start filling in everything else out behind this table of contents page, okay? So anything before this, toss it. So we had our week two unit one vocab, which is the one we just used at the beginning of our lesson on page five. Now we're gonna add our second entry for Sable writing, okay? That's gonna be on what would become page number six, okay? So go ahead and pause my video, add that to your table of contents. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and turn to what would be page number six. Okay, so page six down here on the bottom, make sure it is labeled, so that way we can turn to it easily. All right, so you're gonna start off by writing at the top, Sable writing, all right? Then we're gonna write underneath it, our prompt for the week, okay? I'm just using my notebook so that way you guys don't see the rest of it yet. Don't get overwhelmed. So we have our fable writing, and then we have our prompt. It says write a fable that teaches a lesson. And I put the little P over here so we remember that, oh yeah, that's our prompt for the week, okay? Whenever we're going to be writing, we're gonna start setting it up like this so we remember our prompt, and so we have all of our ideas collected in one area. So go ahead and write that down first. Remember, you can pause my video if you need to. Okay, so after that, we're gonna draw out a T-chart here, okay? Pretend that this line just continues down a little farther. Not the whole page, but like maybe 10 or, or 11 lines, okay? On one side, we're gonna write lessons about life. So something that we've learned, something that we've grown up learning, okay? And on the other side, we're gonna write how we learned that lesson. So in fables, like I said at the beginning of our lesson today, 
Fables are small stories, usually old ones, that tell us something, that try to teach us something. It also tells us how it is that we're going to learn that lesson, right? How does the character in a, that story learns that lesson helps us remember, okay, this is the lesson that we've learned about life, okay? Please write down my example first, all right? So my lesson that I've learned in my life was to take my time on my homework. My dad used to make me redo stuff. If he couldn't read my writing, if he couldn't read my homework, I would have to start all over from scratch, and he'd make me do it again. Ultimately, that means that I learned to take my time, learned to write neatly, so that way someone could read my work, okay? The lesson that I learned was to take my time on my homework. I learned that by, otherwise, I will have to do it again. Right? So you have to do it over again if it isn't correct that first time. On this bottom section, go ahead and draw a line underneath mine once you've got it written. You are going to write your own lesson about life you have learned and how you learned that lesson. Okay? Now, today is only considered a brainstorming session. We will be going over these a little bit more tomorrow. Um, but I do want to have your brainstorm here of a lesson that you've learned and how you learned that lesson so that way we're prepared for tomorrow, okay? That is the end for our writing and reading lesson for today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Again, call, text, email, dojo, all of those things. Uh, we did not have any other videos today um, because we had a math test in our second lesson. But if you have any questions on that as well, go ahead and feel free to get a hold of me. So until next time, guys.